uh, thanks everybody for joining. Um, uh, it feels like every day is about a decade <laughs> um, right now uh, in terms of the news that changes or the things we're trying to do um, and the people that we may have just met four days ago that now have become best friends or the authorities on something. And, and I would say that we've all gotten, uh, we've all received PhDs in epidemiology in the last um, week. Um, so, um, but so that being said, um, one other thing I want to acknowledge is, you know, I think last time, since the last time we spoke, um, you know, this has become a little bit closer to us. Um, so we, I think we're all talking with friends or loved ones or, or um, sons or daughters or parents. And, and um, you know, we're seeing the effects of this a little bit more directly than we were last time I spoke to everybody. So, you know, family members of mine, you know, cousins uh, are now working in hospitals in, in various places or, um, I have in-laws that are quarantined right now in their senior um, uh, living center in um, in Houston, Texas, because um, they've had some. Uh, they had a, a seven positive cases in in their in their um, senior home, and so uh, you know it's basically uh, it's affecting us all. And so uh, if it's you know if it's more directly impacting anybody on this this call, um, you know, I I feel I. F you know, I feel your pain and hopefully, you know, um, I thank Reed for having calls like this to basically, um, you know, just kind of prove that we're all in it together. So, um, so anyway, so I'll kind of jump into some, some updates on various projects that we have going on. So every day we have a team of volunteers at the emergency operations center, uh, working, which is at city hall right now. Um, either accepting donations or doing inventories on masks and gloves and various other thing that we, things that we received. Um, we have Scott James, who many of you know, who is working the desk there for all of the volunteer coordination. We have um, a, a gentleman named Tom Goodham, uh, who is managing all the volunteers that are um, accepting donations of, of personal protective equipment. Um, as well as helping to redistribute that those those supplies out so they get into the hands of our medical uh, folks. Um, Tom runs a bamboo flooring business in his as his real job, and so if any of you need bamboo flooring at the end of all this, I highly recommend Tom Goodham's business. Um, and I could probably list. Um, a hundred other volunteers, 200 all volunteers that, um, again, are, um, you know, each deserve a, um, a plaque or a statue somewhere or, <laughs> you know, because of just how much they've stepped up in, in the last few weeks. And, and I hate to call out in certain individuals because then I'll be missing 99 others who have also sacrificed a whole bunch. So I basically am just putting the word out to every every one of our volunteers, and that includes probably some people on this call who have stepped up and either given things or donated their time or, or expressed interest in getting, you know, doing donations or donating their time. So thank you to everybody. Um, so I'll continue doing um, some updates on other projects that we have. So the mass sewing project that you referenced, Reed, um, so that's been going uh, very well. We did. Um, a drop off of 200 masks, um, uh, surgical masks at Virginia Mason Thursday. Again, all the days are blend. No, sorry, Wednesday. All the days are blending together right now. Um, and um, we uh, we are currently working with or Bainbridge Organic Distillery um, as well as Barn on a hand sanitizer project. So we should have. Dozens of gallons of hand sanitizer um, being uh, distributed um, sometime in the next few days. Um, organic hand sanitizer, if anybody's wondering. Um, we have um, we had a face shield project going on for a while, but we kind of <clears throat> we've scaled back on that because we're we're trying to kind of think about 
the best uses of our time and our expertise. And so every few days we kind of do a stop and say, okay, are we doing the right things? Uh, what should we start doing? What should we stop doing? And so um, we had some amazing face shields <laughs> being created, but found that we could actually order them pretty easily, you know, relatively easily, a lot easier than, than ordering face masks and all that. So we decided to basically redirect our efforts from that. Um, but uh, David Cowan, who, uh, uh, Dr. David Cowan, who I think has spoken to, to you all before, um, I'm on the phone with him daily, and he's constantly giving us, he calls us the rocket shop, um, because he will say, Lauren, like, I need... There's a satellite we need to get up like, you know, three miles above the atmosphere by Sunday and and see if you can work with Barn <laughs> on that. Um, so the amount of things he's given me that are sitting in my 12 year old SUV right now that look like truly space age equipment where they're, you know, one one thing is a helmet. Uh, it's called a papper that that feeds. Um, uh, filtered air in. It's basically the 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 mask, but um, but a thousand times better than the mask. It's what you'd actually see in movies about you know contagions and stuff. So I've got that sitting in my car because it needs to be fixed, and uh, <laughs> because the battery doesn't plug in properly to the, the device. And so uh, so he and I had a thirty minute you know in person conversation about that yesterday. So anyway. Um, those are just little snippets of everything going on. Um, one other special mention is um, we're trying to actually get get a little bit of the word out about some of the interesting things we're doing on the island that anybody could do anywhere, you know. Um, and some communities are stepping up, you know, hugely. You know, we stole the um, the um, hand sanitizer idea from Portland. You know, they I think I, I think they were one of the first ones to to set up a dis, you know turn one of their distilleries into um, uh, you know, producing hand sanitizer. Um, and luckily you're hearing stories about other communities out there or, or you know, big automotive plants that are switching to, to creating ventilators. And so, you know, we want our stories to kind of add to that mix of, of basically American ingenuity and saying like, hey, you know, we, we won World War II and we won all these other things and, and we can win this too. And so if little Bainbridge Island can get our stories out there, um, and and um, inspire other communities, whether it be in Key West, Florida, or or St. Louis, Missouri. You know, so be it. That'd be that'd be great. Um, special note is that we are um, PBS. We're working with Public Broadcasting Service uh, on sort of a quick turnaround documentary. It may not come to fruition. Like anything, everyone's competing for stories, and there's so many stories that can be told right now. But um, if you see me out in the wild with a with my smartphone and and you know it's not me taking selfies because I am not, I am not deserving of selfies. Uh, every time I take a selfie, I, I cringe because I my hair's parted the wrong way or uh, I haven't shaved you know uh, today. But uh, so if you see me out in the wild doing that, it's in the hope that this story that that you know that you are all a part of gets told nationwide through PBS. So anyway, so those are some of the updates. And I'll I'll stop talking and, and turn it back over to Reed. Well I just want to ask you about uh, what things obviously the uh, the sewing of the mask seems to be going pretty well. Um, and it sounds like uh, like those are uh, are those like N95 quality masks or what, what, what kind of masks are they? Yeah. So no, they're not um, because N95. So, so right now in the medical community, they need, um, and, and every hospital and every clinic may need something a little bit different. Some hospitals are, are changing the equipment that they need because of the shortages. And so they're, they're depending on the hospital you speak with, they say, well, that that thing that you're trying to get to Harrison or Harborview or whatever, we don't actually need that. We need this this particular thing. But generally, um, uh, you know, you've you've heard about the N95 masks that are intended for for medical workers to prevent them from getting sick. The masks that we're making um, are for individuals that may have a respiratory illness. Or they may not know, but they basically, if they breathe out or they cough, 
they just want to reduce the chance that the person that they are interacting with, whether it be a doctor or just their family member, doesn't get sick as well. And so both are in short supply. We can more easily create the, the surgical mask that basically prevents the, the sick person from infecting the healthy person. So that's what we've been working on. Um, we've done a few revisions based on feedback from doctors in the clinics. Um, and we may yet, as of yesterday, take a pivot as well to, to change again um, uh, based on materials available and what we've heard the needs are from clinics. So, um, so if I'm on the call again next week, I may have a completely different answer for you. Um, so, that, um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, as you said, we're all becoming virologists a little bit. Yes. And uh, uh, David Cowan was talking to us earlier this week about the uh, suspicion that multiple exposure uh, to the virus can increase the dosage and may make for a sicker person. This is all speculation. But yeah. he was encouraging us that if one of us uh, should get sick, that we can still work hard to prevent those in our family from getting really sick by yep. doing things like wearing these masks. So yes. if, if I am uh, concerned about my health uh, and I am obviously staying in place with my family at home, yep. uh, is it possible for me to raise my it's hand good. and say, could I get one of these masks and who would I tell? Yeah, you can certainly ask uh, for them. Um, so I would say, um, we are trying to funnel all requests through the city, through our partnership with the city. And so um, uh, officially you can uh, request to uh, B as in Bravo, P, basically Bainbridge Repairs, BP, response at uh, Bainbridge, uh, wa.gov. It's always maybe, a, it's a maybe I have a. What if maybe, we just go to the response page on the yeah. internet? What about yeah. that one? Yeah, so you can find the email address there, so I don't I don't miss a letter uh, in the email. But yeah, so basically, you can send your request in and say, "I need to be quarantined because I'm suspected of being sick, and I would like I would like a mask to prevent my family from getting sick um, if they're taking care of me." So uh, you can definitely request it through us. Um, Again, right now, um, those masks that, that our sewers are, are producing have been going to the clinics, but then once the clinics are taken care of, I mean, my, my, my dream is if I had a magic mask wand is every grocery store worker, every, everybody on this call, you know, every delivery driver, um, Anybody that's working for a critical business um, has a mask um, because essentially, you know, as far as we know, that should prevent the, just the rate of sickness going around. So I'm, I'm showing this uh, mm -hmm. Bainbridge Prepared website and there is a button at the top of it that says, uh, I need. Yep. I have a need. And I don't know if there's also the email address somewhere on this page or not. Um, but, uh, can, but you yeah. can definitely click on this and put in your information. And that would get some attention. Yes. Yes, you can definitely do that. And I will look for the email and I will send it out afterwards so that if uh, somebody who's on this call uh, that I know is on this call, if you're on the phone and I don't know who you are because I can't tell who those people are, um, you can send me an email at read at bicseniorcenter.org and I'll get back to you with whatever information we're sharing from yep. this call. And, and what I'll also say is we also try to be smart and not, um, we try to be smart. Not always, we aren't always smart, but we try to be. But basically, you know, the, the great thing about our organization, Bainbridge Repairs, is we partner with other organizations like Reeds, like Senior Center, um, like Island Volunteer Caregivers, like Helpline House, to essentially when a request comes in, we try to be smart and say, oh, Rita, you know, at IVC, do you, do, you, do your volunteers, somebody needs to have groceries delivered. Can your volunteers handle this? <clears throat> and so we all constantly have a dialogue back and forth with 
oh my gosh, so many of the nonprofits and the other and the other partners of ours um, to basically you know try to not step on each other's toes. Sometimes there's a little bit of stepping on toes, but because we're all friends, it's easily you know easily remedied. But we try to be intelligent about you know hey, what can we serve? You know how can we best help, and how can the our nonprofit partners best help? So. If anybody has a question, just uh, open up your microphone. I've muted everybody. So you're going to either have to go to the bottom of your screen and click the little microphone button to uh, get your voice heard. Or if you're on the phone, it's star six to uh, make it so that you can unmute your phone. Um, you, Lauren, are seeing a lot of the parts of this. Do you get a sense that the island is doing a responsible job on the main of... Uh, of being, uh, you know, uh, physically distanced. <laughs> um, you know, for the most part, yes. I mean, I've, I've, um, you know, because our volunteers are considered um, part of the critical infrastructure, because we, we are, you know, what we are doing is having a direct impact on the medical community, or basically keeping people safe. Um, I've been, you know, kind of driving around um, in various places, and I've noticed that, you know, a, a very good um, you know, social distancing and good habits that I've been able to see, you know, so I was at Bay Hay and Feed yesterday and essentially, you know, for example, in their little grocery section, they were allowing one, you know, one customer in at a time. The rest were, <clears throat> you know, sitting outside properly distanced six feet away. And so there was a, maybe a 18 foot long line of like four customers um, waiting to get into the store and get their bread or their, you know, their organic milk and, and, and cheese and all that. So, um, and then Bay Hay had a hand wash station in their nursery um, that people were using. Um, I was at Rolling Bay Market yesterday <clears throat> and, um, and once again, and even the kids, I think there were, uh, I saw two, maybe 10 year olds who probably wanted to come in for M and M's, and they saw me in there with my vest, speaking with the the cashier, and um, and they were, you know, it was like, oh, bad guy, um, and uh, and and stayed out um, because until I exited. So, if the ten year olds are getting it, and you know, the people, it just seems like a lot of people are are doing the right thing. So, thank you to everybody that's that's taking this seriously. And I'm pausing here in case there are any questions. I can keep uh, keep asking them because I have a lot. Um, I'm wondering uh, how how are the do you know if the uh, Safeway and uh, Town and Country markets in particular, which are our biggest groceries, mm -hmm. um, are having any problems with staffing um, or with taking care of their staff? Or do you know? Um, so I was in the Safeway at six a.m. today, um, and um, and it was. And so, you know, for those that haven't been to Safeway in a few days, and again, this everything changes every 24 hours. So um, it may have already changed. It's noon right now, and things may have changed since six in the morning. But, um, uh, you know, it was busy. It was um, a lot of, of you know, uh, new faces in terms of Safeway staffers that I, you know, I hadn't seen before. I know that um, Safeway, um, you know, at least on our island a week ago had a, you know, did a big blast out to, that they needed to hire 50 employees. Um, and I believe I heard as I was walking through the aisles on the, on the, um, you know, speaker system that regionally they were looking to hire 2000 employees. And, uh, and based on the amount of activity in there, it seems like they have been doing a pretty good job of hiring. Um, you know, it, when you go into the Safeway, uh, it, you know, certain things are extremely well stocked, certain things aren't. Um, so there was toilet paper uh, um, when I went in this morning. Uh, you know, it, you can't be choosy about your brand. If you have <laughs> Charmin and they don't have Charmin, you know, you'll just have to deal with a, a, something else. Um, but they did have toilet paper limited. Um and they were limiting the num number of purchases that you could make, which was extremely responsible. You could buy one roll of paper towels and then one box of uh, tissue. Um, but, uh, 
you couldn't find flour tortillas to save your life. You could find corn, and I'm a flour tortilla guy. I'm not a corn tortilla guy. And I'm like, oh, even in a pandemic, I don't want to get corn tortillas. So <laughs> it's 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 interesting to see what what is plentiful, and it's and it's interesting to see what they're kind of having a harder time to to fill. But they're doing it. They're doing an amazing job. Um, and you know, I. When I was checking out, I basically thanked the cashier and I thanked the the, the bagger. I was like, "Thank you guys for doing this." You know, and I know that I know that at Safeway they are um, encouraging people when they check out to give a little money uh, that they're giving to Helpline House. So, okay, um, you can make a donation at the at the register for that. Yeah, I didn't know. I saw the little blurb on the on the you know the, the pin pad or whatever. And I knew that Helpline House had had a serious need, and I wasn't sure where my extra two dollars was going to go through the through the credit card scanner. And I was so I said no on it, and because I knew that because I'm probably going to be at Helpline House later today, and I know that Maria and her team are like we could use we could use the donations. Um, yes, so. yeah. In fact, my understanding from being on calls with her is that one of the things that they are running short of are fresh fruits and vegetables. Yep. And the best way for them to call, to get that is to buy them. And yep. that's probably true for a lot of, uh, they can get better deals. And of course they're, they know that the, where, they know the provident, you know, where, where the vegetables have been when they do it that way. Uh, so supporting the food bank is a great thing. And you yep. can do that either through one call for all one call yep. for all is doing there's actually a call coming up that uh, I'm going to leave this one for to go visit um, at noon. Well, I'll be a little later than that. But anyway, um, and One Call for All is working really closely with organizations like Helpline to disperse money more quickly than they might normally do. Mm -hmm. Their pattern has been uh, twice a year, but they're uh, working closely to make sure that uh, if you donate to them, uh, through them rather, to Helpline or to the Senior Center or to any of the other organizations that they support, uh, the money will get there quicker. So that's yep. that's great. Yep. And if I could, hopefully people don't mind. So I'm actually on the board of One Call for All as well. I've got way too many things going on, <laughs> but I do, I do, I love One Call for All. Um, and uh, Tracy, who's the executive director, is doing a fantastic job. I mean, there are certain parts of our society that are really 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 busy um like tracy because they are trying to do what they would normally do in a three-month time period in three days and so reed if i can't be on the noon call with tracy please tell her thank you for me so i don't know so uh do any of you have any questions about uh, how things are going or what uh what kinds of activities bainbridge prepares is doing uh how you might be able to volunteer as a senior i know that uh IVC is not having uh, us older folks uh, drive groceries around, but uh, mm -hmm. there, are, there are other things that we can do. Well, once... I, have a, I have a question. Yes, Ruth. Um, I'm um, wondering about whether or not it's uh, advisable for me to walk down to TNC. I'm not sick. I don't have any issues um, that way. Um, but you know, I am over sixty, so yeah. uh, I my you know I'm just curious as to whether I you know need to stay at home or can I get out for a little while? Yeah, you know, it's one of those things where we're we're all kind of figuring this out as we go along. Um, and uh, you know, what I would do is so you know if if so I'm forty five, so I'm not you know. I'm deep in the middle age category. Um, and so I'm not, I'm not a, you know, 19 year old water polo player. Um, and, uh, um, but, uh, you know, so I have to worry about myself and, and all that as well. But, um, but what, uh, what I would do and what I did this morning is, you know, kind of know when TNC opens. Um, and, uh, you know, so that you can go in when it's at its cleanest and it's least busy so that you're not, you know, hitting a lunch rush if there is one. Um, the other thing, and I, I, uh, I believe it's on our recover site. I've heard that TNC will do, um, uh, will, will, if you, 
uh, call in or you submit an order online, they will bag up what they can and kind of have that ready for you so it minimizes the amount of time that you need to be in the store. Oh, well, that's a good idea. Yeah, I don't quote me on that because I don't know it. For, I, I believe uh, one of our volunteers posted that. Um, I think I, I, I saw something like that too. Like their yeah. market. That is an absolute fact, by the way. Pardon? Like that? Nine to 11, Monday through Friday. And next week, and next week it's going to be all online. Uh, the person who did this uh, had to uh, dial uh, constantly for about an hour to get it online. But now next, next week, it'll all be online. Got it. Okay. Great. Great information. Oh, yeah, thanks. And, and I'm trying. I'm trying to keep a COVID nineteen uh, page on the Bainbridge Island Senior Center website, and I'm trying to keep that updated with this kind of information. So uh, that's on there, James. Tressa, is that uh, this is a question for Jim? Is that nine to eleven period? Is that for ordering, and is pickup at a later time during the day? That's uh, you're right in both cases uh it is sheila it was it's uh nine to eleven is the ordering pick and they'll give you a time for pickup i suspect they'll stagger it yeah it's between three and six right now pardon what was that three and six p.m perfect so you order in the morning and you pick it up in the afternoon and it's on uh the bi senior center website under covid19 news sheila do you have a question I don't. I'm just being happy to be here because it took me forever to get here. Oh, okay. We're Thank happy you. to have you here. I, I missed the first half hour. Well, mm. I'm recording it. I thank you very much. I will watch it. And I dominated the first half hour, so you didn't miss much. Oh, <laughs> I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> um, let's see. So th I had heard... Uh, this, this hand sanitizer, is that also going to be going like to the uh, clinics and the fire department and the EMTs? Um, so I assume that question is for me. So, um, so uh, you know, we, we think we have a plan right now. And again, everything changes in every 24 hours. But what we want to do is, um, so essentially, uh, what I believe the current plan is, because I'm like three emails behind every time. Uh, with the core team is um, we picked up somewhere between 30 and 50 gallons of um, denatured uh, alcohol from Bainbridge Organic Distillers. Uh, we picked that up um, Wednesday, got it to barn to their commercial kitchen to blend it in with hydrogen peroxide and glycerin and some other ingredients to essentially make high quality hand sanitizer. And what we wanna do is work with the critical infrastructure places, basically critical stores like Safeway, like Walgreens, like Community Pharmacy, um, and a, ha a handful of the other smaller markets on the, on the island like Waltz and Linwood and uh, Rolling Bay, and essentially uh, fill up their vats of their two liter or you know or four liter vats of sanitizer with the home brewed if you will sanitizer and then allow the their customers to come in with their smaller bottles and refill so um you know basically it's there are distributors we distribute it out to them it gets all throughout the island through those critical stores. And I'm, I, we're hoping to get the gas stations on board as well. And essentially, if you are running low on your bottle of hand sanitizer and you need to pick up your prescription from community pharmacy, it's you take care of both at one time. You While they're getting your prescription ready, you can hand pump and, and, and fill up your little bottle and, uh, and be good for another week or two or a few weeks. Okay, and of course and the other. Did, there's uh, plenty. Did, of, did they ahead, add hope to this in the event that you want a multiple purpose? Um, say that again. Um, did did, uh, did they add oak to this in the event that you want a multiple purpose? Um, we, it it has been aged by for like twelve hours in in oak barrels, so um, you know, gives it that that good fragrance that we we all need and that earthy character. Um, so. 
<laughs> so uh, there is plenty of soap still around the island, which is really the best thing to use if you can use it. And I haven't seen any anybody making a run on hand lotion either, which is interesting. Um, also very good to uh, to use because apparently when you wash your hands all the time, I'm learning they get a little crackly. And then, of course, that's a good place for the virus to hide. So um, it's kind of a complicated maneuver we're, we're involved in here. Things that our friends, the physicians, have known for a while, probably. Um, any other questions for Lauren? No. Uh, a very informative visit. We really appreciate you. No, really, you don't need to laugh about it. We, you are, you know more than you may think you know about what's going on here, and we really appreciate you uh, taking the time to share with us uh, what is going on. So, well, thank, thank you, you, everybody. And uh, we'll check back with you. Or if you have something you want to tell us, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to me, and we'll put you on a call right away. Absolutely. Thanks, Reed.